Uncle Patrick, what's going on today, man? How you doing today? Man, Big boss, it's a great on, man. day. It's a great day. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm, I'm good, man. Just another day doing our thing, man. Vet talk, baby. This is this is the platform yes. now. This is the official official, man. I like that. <laughs> so, man, I mean, really what I want to do, man, today was focus a lot on your story, man. I know the last couple of sessions we did, we've been kind of rambling, going all over the place. But, of course, a lot of that came from the um, the, the from the fact that, you know, um, man, we just starting out. And I know yes. one of the hard, the biggest thing about when you starting out a new project, sometimes the fear of being perfect, you know, hits you in a way to where you're afraid to just try and, you know, put um, forth your um, best effort. And I mean, that's what the first few videos were about. But after looking back and reviewing a lot of things that we talked about, a lot of things that we did, I finally realized that, man, you know what? We got to narrate this thing a little bit better. And man, we just gonna okay. give the people what they need to um hear or what they want, and that's really just us being vets and talking about our stories, sharing our story, our experiences, and you know, just letting people know what it is like, what it's like to be a vet. That's true. Uh, you mentioned a little story about me. My name is Patrick. I'm Air Force veteran. I've had three heart attacks, cancer, then I had a stroke, and then I ended up in a wheelchair for a while. Now, due to some issues at my condo with dust, I've been diagnosed with asthma uh, and pulmonary embolism. That means when like my legs swell up on one side, I always just get this dust issue. But now I'm going to have open heart surgery. So you see me plugged in now. I'm pretty much locked in to a certain degree. I got okay. a good team of healthcare that's working with my, through my insurance company. So right now, so far, so good. We'll look at things. Okay, so the question I have is, um, do you have anybody far as um, far as like a veteran organization, anybody helping you, reaching out to you to try to help you with some of these issues you got going on, or are you just handling it on your own? Well, one of the good things about it, when I came to Houston, I got a lot uh -huh. of training. Yes, sir. And in that training, it was called a peer support specialist. Okay. Our job is to help you to navigate pretty much the VA in a sense, mm -hmm. and how to navigate and how to, to kind of figure out those things, different look, what your resources are. Being in Houston, it's one of the, I think it's between Houston and someplace in California that's the biggest, the veterans. Okay. There are a lot of different organizations. So because of all my training, I pretty much I'm learning as I go what my resources really are. All right. Now, though I'm not far from the VA hospital, I'm at another hospital for my surgery. I okay. still support the VA, but yeah. I'm at another hospital for my surgery. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because I mean, I'm the same way. Like, I, I believe the VA is a great source, a great stepping stone. But at some point, you do have to find, you know, other avenues to kind of suit your situation. Because I know a lot of times as vets, we can become one track minded and we can be so driven and so focused on one thing to where sometimes what we focus on as far as like with your health um you may not be getting all of the help that you need so sometimes it's great to outsource the va and you know most people are afraid to because they feel like they're going to lose benefits and different things but one thing i've learned um the va do have programs to where hey you know we are the only people that can help you out and we can you know outsource our help um and and, and basically give you a referral to someone else that can you know, help you out. So it's, it's good to hear that, you know, you're getting the help that you need. How about your roof? Um, what's going on with that situation, man? <laughs> well, <laughs> I still have the issue with the bugs, but I'm, I'll am i be honest with you. If it wasn't because of my resource that I have now, yes, I have an insurance company that I'm going through. They sit the people over here. In fact, I think sometime last week, I may have starved for a little because okay. uh, I don't have transportation. But I didn't ask for anyone to help me either. But okay. one I start asking, what I did not know that you have was called case management. And at the VA, the only thing I heard was about social workers. Okay. Case management is different. That's to my insurance company. They is kind of like your case manager is like an octopus. They have all the arms to actually reach out. Like what we do in peer support, yes, other veterans helping other veterans. We actually know the resources. 
because just because there's a resource out there, that doesn't mean that that resource has is to have funding for you right at the moment. Okay. Or it's something that you can use. My my case manager, she finds all that out. Who has the resources? Who does what? They, they sent me in full because my surgery is scheduled for uh, July the 7th. So I got to get ready for July the 5th. But prior to all of that, I wanted to know how did it work? Once you have like major surgery, where is your, where's your recovery? Yeah. And I kept hearing at one point when I was talking to people at the VA, and I don't put the VA down, do not get me wrong, but everyone kept saying, have the surgery and we'll let you know after the surgery. Okay. And I'm thinking that doesn't really make good sense because think about it, if you're in the military, you want your commander or someone yeah. to know what's going to happen. <laughs> don't just see you out there in combat and don't have a clue what's going to happen. So that's how I'm approaching this whole thing here. And because of that, I may have a high stress level, but okay. I have a higher recovery level okay. because it gave me so many tools coming here. So now I found all different organizations that support people like me. Uh, I also have what's called aphasia. Aphasia, is, it affects us when I had the stroke a number of years ago. It affects our memory, okay. certain cognitive abilities. So as when I was looking for resources, I just reached out to everyone and gotcha. it went beyond the VA it, it, be, it went beyond to a lot of different organizations. So when I found the insurance company that could assist me with this, it locked everything in for me. Okay, and I, you know, that's great to hear because I know that's one of the things that um, most vets like, um, that a lot of vets don't like to do. They don't like to uh, actually reach out and communicate that they need help. And I guess a lot of that comes from just I don't, I mean, I can't, you know what, it's hard for me to even try to explain it. I, I'm not even going to try to explain it. I just know it comes from something because at one point in my life, I was just like that. I felt um, like I needed help, but the bad side of it would be I would never open up my mouth and ask for help. And I'm learning that, man, if you need help, you got to ask, you got to say something because people can't read your mind. And that reminds me a lot of what my dad used to say to me as a young boy. He was like, hey, open up your mouth. Ask, ask, ask. But I had this thing going on for so many years of my life where I wouldn't ask, man. And I'm learning now. You got to ask questions, man. You got to ask questions. You got to open up your mouth. You got to talk. You got to speak. You just can't assume people know what you're going through or what's going on. Because, I mean, everybody's going through something. So you got to open up your mouth and talk. So it's good to hear you even say that, you know, you, you, you reached out to some sources and you talk and you got the help that you need. So. That's great. And that's why I asked you that question. Cause I mean, as a nephew, I'm kind of concerned, like, okay, who's ever up with his roof? I know I've got certain things going on. So you need to make sure he's good, man. <laughs> well, I have a lot going on. And I'm learning again because I got a lot of good tools here. Yes, uh, some came from Mental Health of America, <clears throat> big organization. They sent me to a lot of training, sent me to Washington. What I'm learning here is that I got HOA, Homeowners Association issues. Okay. <clears throat> issues with my roof. I have holes everywhere from my insurance company and they put the holes in, but no one did anything. The HOA would not work with the insurance company. So for two years, I've had holes in my ceiling, holes in my floor, and I got bugs coming in. But what you do, what I'm learning about this, and one of the reasons why I came to Houston, you got to do, well, I would say you have to do anything, but what I applied was called self-care. It got to the point I had to reach out. I had to start looking this thing up and talking to different people because even as mentors, and that's one thing that Mental Health of America taught us in training, you gotta do what's, you gotta apply what's called self-care. How can you help someone else when you're not doing it for yourself? Yeah. So I'm learning from what I'm doing as a mentor to other people right now. Yeah. All I do is listen to them, but no one knows what's going on in my life. So I said, wait a minute, I need to find my resources. Just like I'm asking them to do, yeah. I had to find it, but my life is better. I may be stressed, but I'm not depressed. Yeah. And I look at my life, I'm going through something. I'm not in anything. Yeah. yeah. That's how I look at my life right now. Yeah, and I, and I like a lot of what you said because that's just like this platform on Vet Talk for the longest, man. I'm gonna be honest, I've been procrastinating, telling myself I'm gonna do it. And a lot of my issues weren't the fact that I couldn't do it. I was waiting around for somebody else to help me to do it. 
And I'm learning that, man, you know what? If you want something done, you got to get up and make it happen. You can't wait around for somebody else to do it. And I think that's where a lot of veterans are running to issues that they wait for the VA to do everything for them. Like the biggest thing, you know, most vets are like, oh man, I want these benefits. I want them to help me with this, but get get receiving that compensation or getting the help don't always help everything. It may help some things, but it don't help all things because a lot of the work really has to be done by you as the individual veteran. Like there's things you have to do. You have to make sure that, you know what I'm saying? If you do get benefits, you know how to manage your money because if you don't, that becomes more problems. You have to make sure that you communicate with your family because I know one of the biggest things veterans love to do is they like to keep a lot of things in and don't talk about stuff and I'm learning as a vet, like, you got to talk to family. You got to let them know what's going on. You got to be able to express yourself and say what's going on. Because a lot of times there can be people in your local or like in your surrounding area that can really, really help you. But if you don't really tell them or talk about it, then you don't get the help. Even like vets who don't like to tell people that they're vets. Like, I think that's one of the biggest things True. that, you know, as vets, we got to let go our pride and say, you know what, let me tell more people I'm a vet. Because you'd be surprised of the doors that open up for um for you if you say that you're a veteran that's not to say that you know you should use that as a tool to manipulate and take from you know the system but there is a system out there that's in place to help all of us and i believe a lot of us need to reach out and you know get that help or if people know a veteran hey tell that vet hey get up off your, your behind and let's go i need to take you down so you can go see these people and get the help you need because Again, you can't fight this fight alone. You gotta fight with somebody else. You have to, you need a team. I mean, that's part of what it was for us. That's part of the warrior ethos. Um, we are a warrior and a member of a team. So gotta be a team player. You know, I like that because when I first came to Houston, I was trying to figure some things out. I got the things I thought I wanted, convertible, I got the house, but I got very depressed. So I looked for some resources. It was between Houston, Texas, or to go to California. And I came here because I, I, they, uh, one thing I like about certain things in my spiritual life, I like going to church. And yeah. one of the pastors helped me to come to Houston because he said, don't think, just do. Yeah. When I thought I had things, I really didn't have very much. But coming here, it keeps me motivated enough to keep asking those questions. And sometimes what we don't do we have these good ideas in our mind, but we try to figure out who can help me. And we, if you, like you said, if we don't ask, we then we'll never know. Yeah. I love my church. I got a lot of resources in my church. And if it wasn't for my church, I'm not talking about someone just go to church. You find where, what fits you, what feeds you. Yeah. It fed me because I, I learned about going to marriage classes. Not that I'm trying to get married. I want to know how did it work? I've been through divorces. I have not been there for my kids. My career came before everything else in my life. Yeah. I did not, and I learned that. So before you get married, after you get married, how to stay married. I was in those classes for three years. Anger management. When I first heard that, I was in another class. I'm thinking, well, I'm not really mad. I got issues, but I'm not really mad. But when the, when the person said, what about forgiveness of yourself and others? I volunteered in that class for eight months. But all these things I learned, and sometimes we keep thinking that we don't have the resource available. Reach out and ask someone. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't have a church, find a uh, certain, certain organizations. Not they, they don't have to always be for veterans. They could be for anyone. They can yeah. provide you some type of assistance. But I went to financial management. I hadn't been there either. So now I'm still in financial management. I'm in another organization uh, for entrepreneurs. These people are making six figures, which I'm not. And they all over, the, we got people uh, in, I think, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of it, uh, Australia. Okay. We meet with this person, all different countries, because that's that, that's that new tech that we have now. Like what we're doing now through uh, Zoom. People are everywhere. So yeah. by me reaching out and coming to Houston, I just found different organizations that could help. Okay. And that's what we do. We start off with the VA, but I, I do want to say this as well. I remember before that was in the PTSD. I was in class for five years. Each year, I was still working, still enjoying my career, but I was I was trying to work on myself. 
we worked, we went through a lot of uh, skill sets and people trying, the VA was trying to figure us out. It was with the VA. When we did come up with the PTSD, we started getting these benefits, got 100% right off, the, right off the top. But what they did not give us was skill sets for getting the money. Yeah. So a lot of people died because of money, could got on drugs, whatever it was. You got to, for me, I had to deal with my issue. Yeah. What what got me to be where I was? Not because of you, not because something else, or what happened to me in the past. How do I want to deal with it now? I got some of that from the VA at the time. But for six years, I I learned a lot from the teachers that were trying to learn. And then when they brought in the PTSD and giving out the percentages, they gave us no skill sets for it. They gave us a lot of training, but the training wasn't so much for us as it was for them. Yeah. So find those people that's, that may have the 100% and they can help you with your benefits, but know the, the benefits getting 100% did not change my life a lot. Yeah. It gave me the money. It gave me other, because my doctor asked me something. He said when he gave me, the, he gave me Social Security first, gave me 100%, but he asked me to find the life. He said he could not change what happened to me in the military. I kept wanting them to change what happened or yeah. to admit what happened. He said, that's not going to be the issue at all anymore. But it's going to be where you are now, where you want to get to. So he asked yeah. me to find a life. Well, I got it since they started this PTSD. I didn't start working on that until now. I'm 65. Yeah. I got it when I was like, maybe over 10 years ago. Oh, wow. But not until you start working on yourself, you say, well, wait a minute. I do have a good life. Yeah. No matter how bad things can be, I got bugs come out my ceiling, got holes everywhere. I got an HOA, I got all these different issues, but I know how to, it's kind of like having, uh, I, have to, I have a fund to put funding in in case things go wrong. But okay. just like my feelings, I got a therapist now. I got all these issues going on. I'm gonna find myself a therapist. Yeah. Let them know that my stress issues, I'm not mad. How do I deal with my stress? But these uh -huh. tools I got, some came from the VA, some came from my church, some came from different organizations, but you have so, so, such a wide range of uh, resources. Yeah. And all you got to do sometimes is just ask, like talking to you. Yeah. I mean, I'm learning from you. Yeah. And I think that's um, one of the biggest things. Um, looking back at, at a lot of stuff you're talking about, um, most of us, man, we came from somewhere where we weren't always taught how to cope with certain things or to deal with certain things. And I think for the longest time as a vet, I thought a lot of my issues, as I always said, started with the military. But listening to you, it reminded me that, you know what, I know at some point I had to deal with, you know, just the things before the military because it was certain things that took place in my life um, and I thought I would get that from the military. And I learned that the military don't give you structure because that's one of the mis, um, the misquoted thing is people think that, oh, I joined the military. I'm going to learn how to, you know, be responsible to do this and do that. But <laughs> in actuality, like, bro, now, nah, whoever you are, before you get in the military, you're going to be that same person in the military. It's all about what are you doing to get the tools that you need to be better than the person you was before. And I mean, that's the one of the um, coolest thing about listening to you is you talk about just how you went and put yourself in situations to where you got tools to help you along the way. And, that, and that's awesome. Yes. You know what? I learned a lot of things from the military. One was survival. Yeah. Well, survival is great. We all want to survive. But don't you want to thrive at some point in your life? Yeah. How do you want to feel even at the darkest moment sometimes? How do you really want to feel about your life? Is everything just bad? Or you, have you fell into the pit? Because well, I've been in the pit a number of times, but not until I started working on myself. I said, wait a minute. That pit can go deeper. Maybe I've fallen into it, but it's deeper. Sometimes we think we're at the bottom of the pit, but no, the pit can go deeper. So I can just try to get myself out right where I am. Not think about, oh, I'm at the bottom. I'm stuck. I can't get out. No. Three, like again, three heart attacks, cancer, stroke. Now I got all these other issues. Now I'm getting ready to have open heart surgery at the age of 65. I really don't look forward to the surgery, but I know that it's something I need to do. Just like in our life, 
find the things that's going to replenish you. Just like pouring water into something you need to take a, a drink 